I've been working primarily with Dr. Jonathan Coleman. Um, he's one of the faculty at, at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and, and his research is focused primarily on the molecular characterization of upper tract urothelial carcinoma. Um, and he's published extensively in the past on his findings using bulk sequencing, bulk um, DNA and RNA sequencing of these upper tract tumors. And so kind of our next step was to use this newer technology, this single cell RNA sequencing to get a higher resolution sequencing picture of this disease and to explore, you know, some, some of the interesting components, including the tumor immune microenvironment, which as we know across cancer types, you know, plays a larger, larger role than we previously thought in how cancers progress and respond to therapy and, and things like that. So, um, this is an exciting technology and, and we were finally at a place where we could uh, apply it. So we were able to take, obtain nine endoscopically obtained samples from the operating room. And so this is fresh tissue obtained directly from the operating room and then brought directly to the lab and um, sequenced using the 10X genomics RNA sequencing, single cell sequencing platform. And so once we had that data and, and then we approached it, you know, with the, our computational biologist, uh, David Kuo. Um, and so the first thing we wanted to look at were the molecular subtypes present in these samples. Um, prior work in urothelial carcinoma of the bladder has shown that there are, you know, five or six distinct molecular subtypes that dictates how these, how these tumors respond to therapy and, and things like that and their unique characteristics such as like a, a luminal papillary subtype versus a basal subtype or a neuroendocrine subtype and so we wanted to see if if our tumors you know how they how they fell in that and so prior bulk sequencing work has shown us that upper tract tumors are generally luminal papillary and uh, of that subtype so uh, our single cell analysis also corroborated that and showed that all of the tumors are predominantly, you know, expressing luminal papillary markers. However, it showed that they were also expressing, um, you know, other, other subtype markers as well, suggesting that these tumors are highly heterogene heterogeneous. Um, and that that's important to know, you know, because from the bulk sequencing findings, everything is kind of just averaged out um, where with the single cell sequencing, you can really tease apart the, the heterogeneity, which is, which is important. But overall from that analysis, you know, we found that, that these tumors are predominantly luminal, luminal papillary, which, which is what we would expect. So our next step, we took those same samples and analyzed them for the proportion of immune cells present throughout the samples. Um, and we compared those by low grade and high grade histology. Um, and the, the notable findings were that one, there's a high level of heterogeneity across all samples, you know, in terms of the populations of T cells or macrophages present, it's highly variable. Um, but the one statistically significant finding that we did have was that high grade tumors appeared to have a higher infiltration of macrophages. And so that's kind of our, our big hypothesis generating finding from this data. Um, we know that tumor associated macrophages can create kind of a immunosuppressive environment that can promote tumor growth. And so our next steps will be to explore the, at a higher resolution, you know, what types types of macrophages are present, how they're interacting with the T cell populations and the dendritic cell populations. And that requires kind of obviously a, a detailed computational analysis, which is, is ongoing. And, and now we have some more samples sequenced. And so we're excited um, to kind of pivot into the next step of this project, looking, looking at the, um, the complexity the overall, you know, takeaways from this project are one that, that this process of, of sequencing upper tract disease from these tiny endoscopic biopsies is number one, it's feasible. Um, and we've been able to be successful at a, you know, at a high rate, 
um, even despite some unique limitations to single cell sequencing. And then second of all, you know, this confirms that these, these urothelial tumors are, are very heterogene- heterogeneous and that we need to take that into account, you know, as we consider these tumors in, in terms of treatment and, and such. Um, and then the third thing is, is really exploring the, the immune microenvironment, you know, what, what kind of immune cells are present within the tumor and around the tumor. Um, and how is that affecting progression, recurrence, you know, things that matter to patients, um, treatment response, for example. So, um, we're excited to continue our work exploring that and, and hope to include that in our, in our publication down the road.